Uh, hi everyone. Uh, today we'd like to learn about uh, something very important when we select the overhead line towers, which is the right of way. How this important parameter can be used to select the the right tower. Uh, to start with, when we go as engineers, either electrical or mechanical or civil engineers working together to select the right tower, there are certain parameters that we have to put into considerations before we select the, the final design. One of them is what is the mechanical load? The overhead lines will carry conductors and insulators. Insulators could be light, like non-ceramic insulators, or heavy, like ceramic insulators made in, um, from uh, porcelain or glass material. So that mechanical load has to be handled with the tower. So knowing the conductors, number of conductors, do we use single conductor, bundle of two, bundle of four, uh, what type of insulators, all these mechanical aspects are very important in selecting the, the tower and designing it. Environmental conditions, where is my tower? Do we have the tower near coastal area where we have a lot of salty uh, pollution that can damage and corrode the tower? So maybe I need to use it from a material that is anti-corrosion that will resist the, uh, the corrosion. Also, the right of way. The right of way is also another important parameter that we select the tower based on that. But what is the right of way? In a very simple language, if this is an overhead line, okay, and beneath the, the tower, we have what we call the wired zone. The wired zone is the zone that when you have a projection of the conductors, it will be that that zone. And then we have a border zone to the right and to the left. And this whole distance, we call it the right of way. This right of way is a very important distance. We try to keep it uh, away from any inhabitants, any human beings, animals, and so on and so forth, uh, because of safety issues, because of exposure to electric and magnetic field. Uh, in the coming uh, videos, I will show you two different designs. One that use the classical lattice diagram, which is this one, the classical lattice design of the towers. And another one close to this design, and we'll see the difference between the two when it comes to the, to the right, right of way. So please join me to these two short videos. Uh, this is the classical design of overhead uh, line towers. As you can see here, this is, has a very wide cross arm made from steel. At the end of the cross arm, there is the uh, outdoor insulators. And when you look here, this line is going through uh, some sort of parks and far away from any residential or uh, commercial loads and hence the right of way is large here you don't need to have a comeback design now let's go and have a look to another design that goes through uh, residential uh, customers and see how we can design the overhead lines so that it will have it will have much shorter uh, right of way this is a different design than the classical lattice design. If you have a closer look here, you will see that the insulators themselves, they make a V shape and they make the cross arm. There is no extended cross arm like the classical lattice design. Why is that? Whenever you have a line that goes inside a city, around you a lot of commercial or residential loads, then you want to reduce the right of way. And one way to do that is this is to have this compact design to reduce the right of way. 